This morning's scripture is taken from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, and this is from the New Revised Standard Version. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they had filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. We give thanks for the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God within us, and the word of God among us. Let us pray. Enlightening God, the unfolding of your word gives us light and provides us wisdom and it's to all who seek your truth. We ask that you open our minds and hearts this morning through Pastor Rob's words and the presence of your Holy Spirit, that the mystery of your heavenly realm is made evident here on earth. It's in the name of your Son that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. And uh, thank you, mission team, for sharing with us this morning. Um, you know, between Heaven Bound and the mission team, I think you guys have probably had enough, but, but we are going to look at the Word today. It's always important to take time to do that. And as I, there's something about this story. Now, in, in this particular version of it, John, this is the only one where we see a young boy who brings the fish. and the others, it's just that the disciples have, uh, they already have it in hand. But in this one, uh, a young boy comes up, and it's always bothered me. I, I am sure mothers have not changed that much since the first century and how they care for their kids. Probably not a whole lot. So why is it that this is the only boy whose mom thought, you know what, let's pack him a lunch. He's going out into the hills. You know what I'm saying? And, and some have argued that uh, this boy is the key to untangling this miracle. In fact, some argue that um, in, in bringing this, this boy coming forward, in fact, the word that is used here is um, not uh, necessarily boy, but uh, someone of a lower standing. So we're not certain if it was a young child or just someone, maybe a servant. We're not real certain. Um, but in, in the telling of this story, uh, some have argued that what really happened was that this person of low standing came forward, offered what they had, and all the people were so inspired that they also gave what they had, and so everybody had plenty. That's kind of a nice way of thinking about it, but there are certain clues here, and in fact, the, the, the person himself, the boy himself, is a clue that that's not what's going on here. There, there is something miraculous here in the blessing and the provision that comes forward. Um, from it. So if we look at this story, there's several things that push back. In fact, all of them point back. Scripture does this a lot of times. I don't know if you've noticed this. But a lot of times, Scripture uh, will point back to another story. It'll have one or two little tokens in there that remind us of another uh, passage of Scripture. 
and help us understand it in light of that. And uh, in this case, and in each of the Gospels, we see that it kind of points back to manna. You guys remember the story of manna, the provision that happens there in the desert with Moses? Um, And in fact, uh, helps us understand that this is a miraculous provision. But here in this blessing, we see that Jesus blesses it and it becomes overflowing, overflowing. And we can go ahead and take that scripture down for now. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, But this overflowing blessing that happens, if you've been here Wednesday nights, you know we could use a blessing on Wednesday nights, right? On Wednesday nights when we serve over 400 meals to this community, our kitchen is pretty much at capacity. We can create about 400 meals. That's what we can do in that space and time. Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus could come in and bless because sometimes we get to the end and we're passing out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to the last few people in line. Um, but the, there's another place that we need blessing. We need Jesus' blessing over that food so it, so it stretches. And some nights we wonder how, how it goes as far as it does. Um, but we also need volunteers. While the kitchen might be at capacity, we're not at capacity for volunteers. There's many of you out there Um, who come and sacrifice every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night to feed others, to serve others. And there's something amazing that that happens there because as uh, uh, Pastor Nicky reminded us last week, when Jesus sat down at Levi's house, he was including them in fellowship. And when we have that meal, we might be passing a meal through a car window, but fellowship does happen, and I want you to know that, because this is a church that doesn't just value outreach. We value outreach that changes lives, changes our lives, changes the people that we serve. Yes, it meets a need. And I would argue if all all that happened Wednesday nights was that 400-some meals were passed out and people were fed, that'd be good enough, but I doubt it would elicit the sacrificial servanthood that's coming from a lot of people who are giving up every Wednesday night of their week to be there because they know something more is happening. And I don't want you to be unaware of what's happening. Ministry is happening. And I said this uh, before, but it's been months since I've said it. Uh, That line becomes the church in a lot of ways. They become us and we become them. And there's ministry that happens in in, in both directions. Uh, Ministry that challenges us because some of the people coming through that line dress and talk and look and spend their money very differently than what many of us would. And that can challenge you sometimes. Many of them are living in very different circumstances than we have ever found ourselves in. And that challenges us. So it meets a need for sure, but it also creates this place of fellowship, this place where um, social economic lines are crossed and boundaries are crossed. One of the things I always make sure when I do walk the line is that I thank people for coming out. I thank them. might seem like an odd thing. We're giving you a free meal, and I'm thanking you for coming out. I'm thanking them because in that space, we are able to give the love of Christ. But I want you to hear this and receive it as well. Uh, Steve and Kathy can attest to this. Um, Through this line, we've we've met people that have blessed us. I've talked to a young woman who shared with me that she had her second child coming, and then over nine months, we watched her get, you know, grow into that pregnancy, and then last week, she brought her little baby boy to show him off, you know. And that's fellowship happening. And she was so, she brought him specifically to show Kathy and myself and Steve had been praying with her through that. And the people who are serving those meals know those sorts of stories are happening. Um, Unfortunately, Kathy and Steve and I are the ones walking the line. And so a lot of times we get that blessing, that giving back, but they're the ones making it happen. You guys are the ones that make it happen financially and through servanthood. I want to talk to you about Sherry, who's trying to help her son get on um, disability. Um, he has different issues that I won't go into, but Sherry is a Messianic Jew. Do you know what that means? She was raised Jewish, 
She found Jesus as her Savior, and she'll give me a, 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 a Hebrew blessing in that line. You would, to meet her, you would never guess the blessing she could give to you. But she is such an encourager. And so ministry is happening. So I thank them for coming out because they are a blessing to us. They are part of who we are as a church. And I want to thank you, church, for supporting this amazing ministry. Um, that's a lot of meals for a church to put out. Uh, we could always, always use more help, more volunteers. Um, many hands make for light work. I heard someone say, you know, um, not about Wednesday night, but at different events, like, well, I've shown up and not had anything to do even though I volunteered. And it's like, yes, praise God, we've got enough people doing things. And one extra body in case things go south is fantastic, right? But we definitely could use more on Wednesday nights. But I want you to know that community is happening there. And, and that's what's important here about this story as well. And John gives us a couple different um, details that the other Gospels don't give us. Uh, number one, I've already mentioned that the boy brings the fish and the loaves forward. And second, that the loaves that he has are barley loaves. Seems an odd detail to add. But the detail points us to a story that helps us understand this is a miraculous provision that is happening. And that's where our passage um, from the Hebrew Scriptures, from the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42 and following comes from. This is Elisha, the prophet. He followed Elijah. And uh, he is housing um, would-be prophets of the Lord. He's training them. Uh, he inherited them from Elijah. Elijah's gone up in the chariot. And he has this, exp this moment where they're, they're kind of thin on provisions. And, and here's the story. A man came from Baal uh, Shalashah. There, that's good enough. Bringing fruit from the first fruits to the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, now listen to these words. Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So we have this, you know, uh, the disciples coming to Jesus. We don't have enough. And Jesus says, have them sit down and feed them, right? So this is kind of a, a reference, a callback. So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. And then we have this baskets full that are left over. Uh, he set it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. Now, it might seem, you know, it, it, if your mind is going to what I think of when it says he brings 20 loaves, right? I'm thinking about Wonder Bread, you know? 20 loaves of Wonder Bread, 100 people, a little butter, some honey, you're good, right? That's a nice, decent lunch. But... Uh, the barley is the key to this, and this was likely, in the fact that it was first fruits, it was likely unleavened, so it wasn't full, and it was barley, and, and the picture we have is more like, have you ever bought wheat tortilla wraps? Think about that, only about half the size. That's what we're talking about here, maybe a little thicker, and so 20 of those to feed 100 people, that's not a lot. And so the story is showing us that somehow in the provision for uh, essentially a seminary, a bunch of young would-be prophets. Now, this, this is the interesting thing. These are would-be prophets. These are prophets in training, right? So last week, when Pastor Nikki was talking about Levi's table, it was about expanding our community. You know, uh, bringing in those that maybe traditionally haven't been thought of as God's people. And that's what Jesus was doing and challenging us to do. In this one, in this one, and John even has a little, a little hint that they are reclining on grass fields. It reminds us of Psalm 23 where uh, the psalmist is speaking to God's people. And in the psalm, promising that he will make us lay down in green pastures. And your Bible might say sit down, but the word is actually recline. That's how they ate in that day. So all of this together is pointing to the fact that these 5,000 
and if I had more time, I'd like to do more with that um, 5,000 men. We've always heard that, right? I'm going I'm to do it. I have to do it. So, so 5,000 men, and we're like, well, it was a chauvinistic culture, right? But the Gospels are amazingly progressive for their time. And so it seems odd that the men were singled out. Well, they were singled out because it's pointing back to this Second Kings story. And the fact that it says, you know, it doesn't say it in John, but it says it in the Synoptic Gospels, the other three, um, that they were men and women and children aside. It's an inclusive statement. It's not saying we, the men only count. The Gospel was saying, look, Back in Second Kings, it was just the men being trained to be prophets. But here, a miraculous feeding is happening to a bunch of people that Jesus is teaching and trying to raise up to be those who would speak like prophets for God. And it's the men, the women, and the children. It's the full community. It's an inclusive statement. And John is making it all the clearer that these people on the hillside, Jesus is prepping. And so Levi prepared us to open or broaden our boundaries. In the feeding of the 5,000, we're being asked to broaden our own expectations of what God can do through each of us. We're not just passive recipients on a hillside, but we're being prepared to be messengers to be prophets, every single one of you. In one way or another. One of the key ways we do that here in this church is through our Wednesday night meal. You can be a prophet by packing a meal. You can be a prophet by joining uh, uh, myself or Kathy or Steve. Marty walked the line last week. Any one of you could come and walk with us and make those personal connections with the other part of our church that you may not know yet and be blessed by it and be a blessing. So John is telling us that when you receive the teachings of Jesus, you are receiving training. Training to be one of God's prophets. In fact, we see Jesus saying that about John the Baptist. He was the greatest of the prophets, but the people who are coming next are going to be so full of the Spirit, all of them will be at John's level. Hard to believe. But that's why the gospel is amazing. You can be a light. You can be a prophet. You can be a word of encouragement and caring to someone else. In the same way that the prophets brought healing and love and the message of God you can do the same. So as we read this story, it's much more than food. And we say that Wednesday night, it's more than a meal. We say that Wednesday night all the time, it's more than a meal. And I hope that you're finding more than just being fed on the hillside. But you're allowing that feeding, that food, that miraculous provision to be preparing you, you, not just to be ministered and fed, but to go out and do the ministry, do the feeding, do the work of God that we, the church, are called to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the calling, the amazing calling uh, that you've given us as your people to do the work that the Messiah came and showed us how to do. That's our job now. We thank you for him paving the way that we might, that he was the first of many sons and daughters of God, many prophets, many voices of love and care and concern and provision and miraculous feedings. Lord, as we have eaten of the loaf and of the fish, let us be nurtured that we might go out and miraculously provide for others. It's in your name we pray. Amen.